Hey guys, it's Danny. Happy New Year. I hope all of you are okay. Hope you had a wonderful time. You celebrated. And if you didn't, well, that's okay. I hope you're just well and happy to be in a new year, a new beginning, full of orchids because that's what we're interested in. So I welcome you to another year of orchid videos. And let's just start off by seeing what orchids were in bloom in December last year. We have more orchids that I purchased and we're just gonna recap them that I have bloomed, but that's okay. So let's start off with one of my favorites which is not in bloom anymore. Now this is the Bulbophyllum Elizabeth and Buckleberry and as you can see the flowers all dropped, they're on the floor along with a nice bag that I simply didn't pick up. So I'll show you on the screen how the flowers looked like. This orchid is truly an easy grower among the Bulbophyllum orchids, at least from the ones that I tried. I have it for two years, almost three years already, it bloomed twice. The only downside to this orchid is that it's kind of tiny. I purchased it as a tiny division, I don't think it was a seedling, so it's gonna take a until it becomes bushy and starts to put out more than a flower spike because each flower spike only has one inflorescence and each pseudobulb only creates one flower spike. So you see where I'm going with this idea. The bushier the orchid is, the better the bloom display. But one single flower is enough to completely make you fall in love with this orchid. So needless to say, the flower is spectacular. Absolutely does not look like your regular orchid. If you see it and you don't know what it is, you might think it's a totally different plant, but no, it's an orchid. And Bulbophyllum orchids are notorious for having these nice flowers, wild looking like flowers. They're also very popular for having stinky fragrances, but I can tell you that this hybrid does not. If you stick your nose into the flower, you will feel a sort of a, I don't know, vegetation type of smell. It's not necessarily pleasant, but it's not really bad either. And it's very mild, so it will not fill up your room and kick you out of the house. No, in no way. So if you're looking for a very showy Bulbophyllum, you also want it to be hardy and not have a stinky fragrance. The Elizabeth M. Buckleberry, which I see becomes more and more popular in all orchid shops is a good choice to start with and I know a few of you guys already purchased it so if it blooms for you let me know if you liked it. Alrighty the second orchid that bloomed last year is the beautiful Bellara Diana Dunn Gothic and as you can see one of the flowers is already spent. I wanted to film this orchid earlier but I kind of procrastinated, I didn't catch the full display. This orchid produced two flower spikes this time, I had no more bud blast like in the previous years but I can tell you this particular hybrid is quite hardy. Of course it follows the same requirements as all Bellaras do, a lot of water, intermediate to kind of bright shade, they're not really keen on having super bright light but what they love the most is moisture and being watered in time, they don't really like to dry out. And behold, I have some really lovely flowers this year. One of them is a little weird in the sense that it turned out a little bit mutated, but that's okay, it happens sometimes. In person, the flowers of this orchid are really superb. This orchid is also fragrant, but it's not necessarily my favorite fragrance of all times. It smells kind of peppery, kind of salty. If you have other Bellaras or even Brassias, you kind of know what I refer to by the peppery scent. It is quite unique and interesting, so if you're into those types of scents, this one might be to your liking. The fragrance is not powerful at all, it is quite mild and you need to stick your nose into the flower to feel it, so that can be a bonus or a minus, depends on your preferences. However, when it comes to the flower, I don't think we can argue, it is absolutely beautiful and I hope it becomes more available in orchid nurseries and even in flower shops, because I did purchase mine from a hypermarket, which is pretty uncommon, but there we go, you can be lucky sometimes. Okay, so as far as reblooms go, these were the only two orchids that I bloomed in December. I do have a few that are starting to open up right now, but I'm just gonna leave them for January, so they are in full bloom and I hope I'm not gonna forget to film them. Alrighty, now let's take a look at the orchids that I purchased in December because we do have some IDs and if you remember, I did make quite a nice haul. So let's take a look at those orchids and give you some IDs. Okay, so the latest orchid that I purchased was a Paphiopetalum orchid and as you can see, the flower is spent, but I did film it in full bloom. You can also see the picture of the flower on the tag right here. This is an American hybrid. I had it before and I will link you down below to a presentation video for this orchid. It is an easy grower, really suited for beginners, especially if you're just getting into Paphiopetalums, before you move on to species that might require different care or a certain type of attention. The American hybrid is a really really good choice and it also has a very showy flower. Downside is it does grow kind of slow if you compare it to other orchids, but it's part of growing Paphiopetalums. You cannot expect these orchids to be very fast growers, sadly. 
Alrighty, so here we have an orchid that is just losing her flowers, but I do have footage from when I purchased it. This is a brassia actually, it's not called brassata anymore because of, you know, name changes, reclassifications. Anyway, it is a brassia now and actually it is not a mevara like I initially thought. It is an orange delight. How I know this? Well, I checked out the nurseries, the commercial nurseries from Netherlands. Luckily, there are a lot of them and everybody gets supplies from the Netherlands. Trust me on this one. It's really rare that you see orchids coming from other countries, maybe Germany, but most of us, or actually most flower shops in Europe, get their orchids from the Netherlands. So most of the commercial nurseries from Netherlands have the Orange Delight, which is a Mivara hybrid, but it's not the Mivara. So here we have a Brassia Orange Delight. It's not necessarily orange, but indeed it does have that really nice yellow, which is kind of golden. I'm not really sure how to describe it. I'll just say golden from now on. It is a combination of yellow and orange, which I definitely prefer to the very light yellow. Now, fragrance-wise, I'm not sure what to tell you. This orchid was already on her way out bloom-wise, so it didn't really release the full potential of her smell. But if I know Brassias, it might have that really peppery and salty smell to it. But again, it's really mild. It's nothing to kick you out of the room if you're worried about that. And the flowers do compensate for this lack of fragrance. Okay, next to it, we have another intergeneric. I was telling you that I suspect it is a wild cat, but I'm not sure. Well, as the flowers are starting to open, I'm pretty convinced it is the wild cat. Odontocidium or odontoglossum. I'm not sure how they call it these days, but I'm gonna put the name on the screen. Wildcat, most probably it is the bobcat variety that I had before and I lost when I moved due to Fusarium. So this is a replacement of that orchid. I'm really happy to have it. This is one very, very hardy intergeneric. I had a few wildcat hybrids. They were all very hardy, very sturdy, and I had to mess them up, but it was absolutely my fault. The hybrids themselves are very hardy, and I would recommend them if you're into Oncidiums where you're looking for something, let's say, easier to grow. Although Oncidiums in general are easy to grow, but if you're looking for the epiphany of easy to grow, I would definitely go for a wildcat. There are other varieties and color combinations as well. Not a lot of them, but definitely you can find some yellow and this type of dark red varieties. You can find the dark red variety. I think one of the varieties has some white on the lip. There are a few variations. They're quite showy, quite hardy, easy to care for. They just really, really like water. So pretty much like all other Oncidiums or intergenerics, they don't really like to stay bone dry for too long. Now in the same hole, I purchased a Phalaenopsis orchid as well, and it's one of those big lip hybrids. Sadly, I could not find an ID for this one just yet. There are quite a few big lip hybrids, but this was not among them on the internet, of course. So sadly, I don't have an ID for it just yet, but I'm hopeful I will find an ID in the future. I absolutely love the lip on this orchid. Compared to the other big lip that I have, it has really intense colors, and I kind of prefer this one to the other one, but both of them are really pretty with that very white lip, reason why they are called big lips, and I think it's gonna be a new trend for the future. I think the classic Phalaenopsis orchids will slowly, slowly start to fade away and their place will be taken by these Phalaenopsis because both of these orchids were purchased at normal prices. They were not more expensive than other normal orchids, so probably the nurseries will start to pick up these hybrids more than the classical, I don't know, washed out pinks and stuff like that. I think some of the Phalaenopsis orchids that you can find anywhere in shops right now will kind of disappear and their place will be taken by new hybrids. At least this is my hope because this is a lot prettier than a washed out pink Phalaenopsis. That's just my opinion and keep in mind I'm not a huge fan of Phalaenopsis in general, but even so, the big lips really caught my eyes and made me purchase them, so that says something. All right, next to this orchid we have a Cymbidium. Yes, it lost all of its blooms and indeed the pinkish hue that the blooms had was a sign that they were on their way out. But that's okay, we're gonna look forward for next year's blooming, but I have an idea for this one. It is called the Sarah Jean Purple, oh uh, no, Sarah Jean Ice Cascade. I was about to say Purple Cascade, which is the caveat that is on my wish list and I really, really wanna have. So yeah, it was the Ice Cascade. It's supposed to be fragrant, but since the flowers were on their way out, I didn't feel anything sadly, so I'm just gonna have to wait for next year. But it is a mini Cymbidium compared to other Cymbidiums. It's really not 
that big. Of course, it's not tiny either. It's not a proper miniature orchid, but definitely it does save a little space. So if you want some cymbidiums that you can grow in a house and you don't have too much space, I think this is a good choice. I read about it and it appears to be easier to care for and more willing to bloom than other cymbidiums, the Australian cymbidiums, which are the big ones with really big flowers. So I think this one can be suited for home environments as well. They do require bright light, Pretty much all cymbidiums do require bright light, but when it comes to the cool down and all of those things that make other cymbidiums rebloom, supposedly this one is not that picky and you can rebloom it theoretically in the house. So that's quite encouraging for me. I am not necessarily a fan of stuff that are hard to bloom, although it is an accomplishment when I make them bloom, but it's not necessarily what I'm looking for in an orchid. The easier it is to care for and the showier it is, of course, the better it is. All orchids have their quirks and you do need to learn them a little bit, so it's not like it's gonna be boring. But since these orchids bloom once a year, you know, I don't wanna have a lot of trouble. So if you are that type of person who really, really does wanna have some success with orchids, you really like some videos and never had space for them, definitely check this hybrid out. It does require some space in the sense of pendant blooms. So most probably you'll need to put it on a higher shelf or hanging somewhere if you have the space. You kind of need to make some room for the flowers, but I don't think this is a problem. So alrighty, this was the video for today. But before I let you go, I have a little question for you guys. So I am planning my orchid haul for the spring. Yes, I'm starting to plan it for now. I'm making my wish list just to see how much money I need to put aside. And the earlier I start, the better the hole will be. Now, I really, really, really want to try a nursery out. It's Class and Orchidine from the Netherlands. So my question is, have you ever ordered from this nursery? And if you did, what was your impression? Are you happy with the orchids? Did they fit the description on the website in the sense that were they mature if they were specified to be mature and so on? Just let me know your thoughts and your experience with this nursery. It is from the Netherlands and I'm really hoping we will not have troubles with transport. So yeah, if you have experience with this nursery, do let me know down below your thoughts. I'm curious to know. I don't think I've seen any unboxing from this nursery or maybe I missed it. If you yourself have a video with an unboxing do link it down below i will make sure it doesn't go in the spam folder i would love to see it and thank you so much as a little spoiler i did purchase a few more orchids in december but it was the last day of december we're just gonna present them in january and they're really cool so this week i'm gonna film them i'm gonna talk about them do some videos about them so stay tuned for that and i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up if you didn't give it a thumbs down subscribe to my channel for daily orchids and plants videos now that vacation is over i'm gonna get into my usual routine and also don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video and with that said thank you so much for watching i'll see you tomorrow bye these multoniopsis have been in bloom for so so long i really want to repot them right now so i think this is the first one to get repotted because we have new roots growing and this is the perfect time to repot it so i'll cut the flower spike most probably i'll repot it but as you can see the flowers are still going strong they don't have a strong fragrance anymore you can see edges are already fading but wow such a long time in my case a month and a half that's not too bad